You know, sometimes you might just have enough of shoplifters if you work in retail, uh, considering the climate that we're in these days where it's pretty much legal to shoplift the end. Uh, no one's going to go after you or it will take uh, quite a bit to have anything happen uh, to you. This uh, story comes from Kansas City, where prosecutors are now charging a store employee of O O O O'Reilly Auto Parts. Auto Parts. Ah! I never knew what the hell the, the the thing at the end was. Is it like, right. yeah! or is it like somebody being stabbed and the audio cuts out? I don't know. It was Maybe. always weird. Um, uh, the employee. I'm kind of surprised it isn't the owner. I'm surprised an employee took this level of. Uh, of control uh, over uh, a shoplifter. Uh, the employee fatally uh, strangled the customer after he caught them uh, allegedly shoplifting. The altercation at O'Reilly Auto Parts in Kansas City turned deadly when a 23-year-old man, Diamond Steen, allegedly was attempting to shoplift, and then he was strangled by a store employee. The incident has led to a significant criminal charge, highlighting the potentially dire consequences of taking the law into one's hand. Well, here's a thought, though. How about the law does their job and starts arresting these fuckers? Well, I so, don't even think the police had a chance to get there before this guy took matters into his own hands. Well, so. probably not. I'm speaking more on a whole where we see these sort of shoplifting actions taking place all the time, and documented, and, and it's like, okay, well, I won't take the law into my own hand, but where's the law? Oh, the law's not well, coming? The law's not doing? The law's just letting this happen? I can kind of Did understand you see what happened in Philadelphia this week. Which one? Yeah. Well, um, another, I don't even, what do they call it? Where a bunch of gangs come in and basically just Flash. ransack the place and yeah. take what they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It happens all the time. Uh, Philadelphia is an extremely corrupt city. So uh, I'm not surprised that they don't have the organization to get this done, considering they think that when you get stabbed in the back of the head 20 times, it's suicide. Uh, that they may be incapable of, uh, you know, cracking down on shoplifters. Uh, just might be a difficulty for them. Um, no, good, good point. But hey, one more thing. Target is closing nine stores across four states claiming that good. theft and orga organized retail crime have made the environment unsafe for staff and customers oh. and unsustainable for business. And you so know what this is a huge It deal. is. And, and Target's going to get all this back. And good for Target. I 100% support Target doing that because you can't sustain a business when everyone in your neighborhood is stealing from the business. Because well, the, right? the, the arguments, be, well, they're, they're abandoning these neighborhoods and these communities that need them. Yeah, because those communities have destroyed the store. That's why it's happening. Uh, so, yeah, any business, any business owner with any common sense, you're not just going to stay open for the sake of the community when you're putting your staff and customers and everybody at risk every day with the mm -hmm. insanity that's going on in some of these areas. How about we get our communities under fucking control and then, yeah. you know, good things won't leave your area. That I, I'm That's just a good point. I'm always shocked by the arguments that come in, like, well, they're they're abandoning. Like, they're not. They were there. They were trying to make it there. They didn't want to have to close their store, but since the community uh, decided that it was a great target and literally a target, uh, Target said, "Fuck you," and we're leaving. Um, yep. uh, Kansas City uh, police on the evening of September 19th is when the call came in regarding the disturbance at O'Reilly Auto Parts uh, lo located on a parallel parkway. The caller informed the police dispatch that two men were allegedly shoplifting from the store. This led to a confrontation outside the store premises between the alleged shoplifters and the store employees. By the time the police arrived at the scene, they found one man unresponsive, uh, necessitating immediate CPR. Unfortunately, efforts to revive him failed, and he was declared dead on the spot. Deceased individual was later identified as Diamond Steen, another individual uh, involved in the incident and bearing minor injuries was promptly transported to a local hospital. He's now in stable conditions. Uh, the uh, Wyndot County District Attorney Mark Dupree in a public announcement uh, on September 21st confirmed the arrest of Carl Kempian, a 39-year-old employee of the store. Kempian has been formally charged with second-degree murder. Uh, elaborating on the seriousness of the charge, Dupree stated that Kempian is accused of unlawfully and intentionally using or causing Sheen's death. He further specified that the act was committed recklessly, showcasing extreme indifference towards Steen's life. 
The autopsy report solidified the narrative of the fatal confrontation. The findings determined that the cause of Diamondstein's death was strangulation, categorizing the manner of death as a homicide. The gravity of the situation was captured in Dupree's words. The deceased's airway was completely stopped, and that ultimately caused his death. The incident now has opened a legal can of worms. Dupree mentioned the possibility of additional charges, not only against uh, Kempeman, but also another O'Reilly employee involved in the altercation. The ramifications from this event have the potential to extend far beyond just one individual. The severity of the charges uh, are looking like this. If he's found guilty, he could face a prison term ranging from 109 months to 493 months. Uh, in uh, simpler terms, Ketman could be incarcerated for 9 to 41 years. Uh, his bond wow. is set at $125,000. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I know where you're headed. Tony. I don't have I, anything I good it. to say. I don't have anything good to say because uh, this shit's out of control. Uh, this person obviously went too far, but uh, I don't know. At the same point, you're fucking shoplifting. And, you know, if you don't want to be attacked by someone or be arrested or some sort of shit happening to you uh, that's negative, that could potentially, I would assume, if you're committing a crime like that, I don't know. I, I, I think committing almost any crime, if if you end up having the authorities involved or some very angry person involved, could result in death. Especially if it you like could. run and they have a weapon. Um, I know I always assumed, like probably wrongly, but I mean, I assumed, you know, if you stole stuff, this is my thought when I was younger, and you know, you fled from the police or something of that nature. They have every right to shoot you. Um, obviously, that's probably not the case because we don't see that. Um, but uh, in some cases, we do when people are caught shoplifting and stealing things and uh, causing havoc to other people and endangering lives. This clearly was not necessarily someone endangering others' lives. But still, uh, one wrong does not make another wrong right. But I, no. I, I think there's... Uh, you're going to see more of this. You're going to see more of uh, smaller stores and people fucking losing it on these shoplifters. And I think you'll see more shoplifters dying uh, because uh, society is done with it. They, they're fed up. They're not going to have it anymore. And the authorities and the people that we look to to make this shit stop, not really working out very well in most places. Uh, some places it does, some places it does not. Uh, specifically those areas where the police have their hands tied literally and can't do anything. I think you're going to see but, a lot more. But of this. don't you think, are we running into a problem where the general public becomes the, the judge and the jury and the executioner? I mean, we have a legal system intact. Yes, they are because our system's not working. I, I get that. I, and believe me, I, I worked in retail when I was a teen. I, my God, it was horrible. It was, which is why I don't do it now. Uh, but, and I, I get it. Somebody shoplifting and you, it, you're just pissed. You've had enough of this shit, you know, I get it. But also you are not in a place where you can give them the punishment that they deserve. No, you, you, know? you can't. And, and you have to have the common sense to know that this is not going to work out well for you. If you try and do this sort of thing, I just think you're going to see far more people that are unhinged that are just having enough of this. And in no way am I saying go fucking kill shoplifters. Um, right. But I am saying uh, there needs to be consequences. And if that means uh, someone at the store knocks them to the ground uh, and keeps them at, you know, detained until police can come, which again, probably not a good idea, um, but nothing seems to be working here. Um, you're going to see some very vicious attacks, I think from store owners and business owners that are trying to survive, and then this sort of shit is going on and, and destroying their lives and destroying their businesses, and there's nothing going on in terms of law enforcement in some of these communities to stop or help any of it. Uh, Portland, Oregon being one of those places, which is why three targets are leaving Portland, Oregon. Yeah, exactly. I have a friend that lives there. It's a cesspool, and it's so sad because it used to be a, a kind of a cool you know, city to visit and had really kind of a neat art scene and all that. Now it's like the walking dead. Quite literally, I, I, I have no other way to describe it. It is the walking dead. Uh, and it, it's just scary to see what is going on. And, and I, it's I'm surprised 
more businesses have not left that area yet. Wow. And it's sad. It it shouldn't be going this way. You know, people are talking about, and I, I'm not going to get political, but they're talking about the price of inflation and things like that. And it's, things are expensive. Well, well, here's a good reason why, because these, these stores have to make up for the loss. And there is a tremendous amount of yeah. product loss because of shit like this. Well, it's, it's a problem that creates more problems. And I, I don't know why it's so difficult to enforce laws. I mean, I, I just don't get it. I mean, we didn't used to have these sort of issues um, because they weren't allowed to happen. There, there was there was policing that went on. Uh, I mean, in the same cities that want to get rid of police forces as well are like the ones that have the biggest problems. It's like, OK, right. idiots, you, good luck. Good luck, everybody, with th this idea, because that will work out fabulously for you because you're already running such a lovely community that everyone wants to go and live in. Oh, wait, no, everybody's fleeing. Um, so, no, obviously, this man should not have been strangled. But I, I, I do understand the anger that probably a lot of these uh, employees and owners have uh, of this sort of shit going down because it's unchecked. And it's, it's the Wild West. Is, it feels like where we're living now. Absolutely, it is. And something's got to change. Well, without a doubt. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.